Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is Kiran Aslam. I am from BS Chemistry. And topic was assigned to me for the presentation is dispersed dyes for polyester. So the top, my the content of my presentation are introduction of dyes, then why we use dispersed dyes, properties of dispersed dyes, classification of dispersed dyes, its manufacturing process, and then we will see the colors of dispersed dyes, sublimation fastness. Then we will see the dyeing mechanism. In this mechanism, we will see three methods, carrier dyes, dyeing method, high temperature dyeing method, and thermosol dyeing method. And at the end, we will see printing with dispersed dyeing. So first, moving toward the introduction. Dyes are color unsaturated organic chemical compounds capable of giving color to a substrate. At its style, example, coloring a dye is. Why we use dispersed dyes? The term dispersed dyes have been applied to the organic coloring substances which are free from ionizing group and are of low water solubility. And these are suitable for dyeing hydrophobic fibers. Some fibers are hydrophobic, so for the dyeing of that type of fibers, we use the dispersed dyes. Because the dispersed dyes are free from ionizing group. So here are some examples of the fibers which we dye by using the dispersed dye. These are stylose, acetylene, nylon, polyester, acrylic, and other synthetic fibers. So why we use dispersed dye for the hydrophobic fibers? Because the negative charge on the surface of the hydrophobic fibers like polyester cannot be reduced by any means. So the non ionic dyes like dispersed dyes are used, which are not influenced by that surface charge on the hydrophobic fibers. So here are some properties of the dispersed dyes. Dispersed dyes are non-ionic dyes, so they are free from ionizing group. They are ready-made dyes and are insoluble in water, are heavy, or have very low water solubility. They are organic coloring substances, which are suitable for dyeing hydrophobic fibers. Dispersed dyes are used for dyeing man-made halos, esters, and synthetic fibers, especially acetate, polyester fibers, and sometimes nylon and acrylic fibers. Carrier dispersing agents are required for dyeing with dispersed dyes. And we will see the carrier dispersing agents in carrier dyeing method. And then the dispersed dyes have fair to good light fastness with a rating about four to five. The wash fastness of these dyes is moderate to good with rating about three to four. Of all dyes of dispersed dyes are of smallest molecular size. Generally, dispersed dyes are derivatives of azo, anthraquinone, nitro, and quinine groups. They do not undergo any chemical change, change during dyeing. But there is one defect of dispersed dyes that is, in the presence of nitrous oxide, textile materials dyed with certain blue and violet dispersed dyes with an anthraquinine structure will fade. This is called gas fading of dispersed dyes, which is a defect of this dye. Next is the classification of dispersed dyes. We classify dispersed dye on the basis of chemical structure, on the basis of fastness, property, and on the basis of energy requirement. So first, on the basis of chemical structure, there are nitro dyes, amino ketone dyes, anthraquinoid dyes, monoether dyes, and diether dyes. And according to fastness properties, there are four groups, group A. These dyes have excellent dyeing properties and good fastness properties. In the group B dyes, are excellent in high temperature and for carrier dyeing with moderate fastness. Group C, these are moderate for carrier and high temperature dyeing with a higher fastness property than group B dyes. And the group D are of excellent fastness to heat, but for dyeing properties on carrier method. According to energy requirement, low energy dyes, medium energy dyes, and high energy dyes. The medium energy dyes, these dyes are used to dye with carrier for dyeing 77 degrees Celsius temperature is required, and they have extremely poor resistance to sublimation. Medium energy dyes, these dyes are used to dye mostly in between temperature 104 to 110 degrees Celsius, which provides better sublimation fastness than that of low energy dyes. And the high energy dyes, 
These dyes are used to dye at temperature above 129 and are suitable for a continuous dyeing. They provide all round fastness properties. So here are following uh, chemical groups in dispersed dyes, monoether dyes, anthroquinoid dyes, and so on, and these their percentages in dispersed dyes. So next is the manufacturing process of dispersed dyes. Each color of dispersed dyes requires different raw materials because there is a range, wide range of colors and each has its own manufacturing process. The difference in process is primarily in the reaction period. The general steps that are involved in the production of dispersed dyes are diazotization, coupler preparation, coupling, filtration, dispersion, and drying. Diazotization is a process of reacting a primary aromatic amine with nitrous acid in the presence of excess mineral acid to produce diazo compound. For the manufacturing of dispersed dye, paranitroenolein is, is added to a mixture of water and hydrochloric acid, the content is stirred, and ice is added. The diazotization is carried out by adding sodium nitride. In the meantime, 198 kg of 2 and ethyl anilino ethanol is added to a hydrochloric acid and stirred for 19 minutes. When the dissolution is complete, the solution is diluted with 3000 liter of water and 1000 kg of ice added to bring down the temperature. Then the dye the solution runs into this above solution in two hours. The content is stirred for 15 minutes and 2000 liters of water. 200 kg sodium bicarbonate and 200 kg ice are added in three hours. The stirring is continued overnight. The contents are diluted and filtered. The actual dye that is formed in the form of large particles during the last stage of its manufacture and in this it is unsuitable for dyeing. So the stabilization of the dye bond involves incorporation of large amount of suitable dispersing agent followed by grinding. So far, converting the large particles or dispersed dyes into smaller particles, there are two methods. In one method, the dye in the form of the filter cake is mixed with a concentrated solution of the dispersing agent in the water, partially dried or drum dry, and converted into a sticky mass. This mass is then fed to roller, situated close to each other, but rotating at different speeds. The shearing action exerted on the dye by the rotation of the roller reduces the particle size of the dye. And this is further followed by grinding and dyeing. And another method, the dye paste is milled in the presence of a large excess of dispersing agent and then drying in the spray dyer, in which the paste is sprayed into a stream of hot air when the water present is rapidly evaporated. This is a process. This is a general process which we use for the production of dispersed dyes. Here are the following color of the dispersed dyes. There is so many colors, but I mentioned only a few of them. The first one is dispersed red dye. Its commercial name is SRA Red. Color on its color on fiber is bright bluish red. This is the formula structure of dispersed red dye. And we prepare it by treating one anthraquinone sulfonic acid with methyl amine under pressure. The next one is dispersed orange 11. Its commercial name is SRA Orange 2. And its color and fiber is bright orange. And this is its formula. And it, we prepare it by treating nitrate to methyl anthraquinone and reduce it. The next one is dispersed red 15. Its commercial name is Fast Red 15. And its color and fiber is bluish pink. And its preparation is nitrate one hydroxy anthraquinone and reduce with sodium sulfide. Dispersed blue 22. Its commercial name is SRA fast blue 3 and its color and fiber is bright reddish blue and we prepare it by react leucoquinizadin with methyl amine and oxidized it. And this is the formula structure of dispersed blue 22. The next one is dispersed red 4. Its commercial name is Fast Pink RF. Its color and fiber is bright pink. And we uh, prepare it by treating 
purpurine with ammonia to give 1 amino to 4 hydroxy anthraquinone and treat with dimethyl sulfate. Next is the sublimation pass nest of dispersed dye. Sublimation is a process of phase change from solid to gas without going into liquid phase. Fastness for sublimation is probably the most important requirement of dyed polyester apart from fastness to light. The migration behavior and word fastness of dispersed dye and polyester are closely involved with their response to heat treatment. Adequate fastness to heat is essential so that the dyed material will withstand with the conditions encountered in heat setting, durable plating, ironing or pressing of the goods during the making of up of garments, finishing process where high temperature is involved and thermal fixation of prints. The poor sublimation fastness result in the following problems. It will uh, create change in original shape, staining on adjacent fibers in contrast, dyed, fi dyed fabrics, poor color yield and fixation rate in thermal fixation of print, staining of dyed polyester, saving threads after stitching and embroidering contrast stitched and embroidered articles. Cross training during storage. How we can avoid the problem due to poor sublimation fastness? Preheat setting most of the fabrics before dyeing, carefully selecting the dyes so that all component yarns have satisfactory fastness in multicolored or contrast color designs where fabric is not post heat set. Selecting high sublimation dyes for dark shades and medium or low sublimation dyes for pale shades. The sublimation fastness influenced by the dyeing conditions and dyeing cycle followed. Therefore, the dyeing cycles must be optimized for best sublimation fastness. How to test the sublimation fastness of dispersed dyes? The sublimation fastness of dispersed dye is usually tested for staining and shear change, tested at 180 degrees Celsius or 210 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds, and rating is done on the 1 to 5 gray scale. If the rating is 5, which means very, uh, it has good sublimation fastness. Dyeing mechanism of dispersed dyes. So now we will say the dyeing mechanism by using the dispersed dye. The dyeing of hydrophobic fibers like polyester fiber with dispersed dye may be considered as a process of dye transfer from liquid, means from water to a solid organic solvent to fiber. Dispersed dyes are added to water with a surface active agent to form an aqueous solution, aqueous dispersion. The insolubility of dispersed dye enables them to leave the dye liquid as they are more substantive to the organic fiber than to the inorganic dye liquor. The application of heat as to the dye liquor increases the energy of dye molecules that accelerate the dyeing of textile fibers. So this is the reaction, how the dispersed dye uh, how the dispersed dye attached with the fibers. Heating of dye liquor swells the fiber to some extent and uses the dye to penetrate the fiber polymer system. Does the dye molecule take its place in the amorphous region of the fiber? Once taking place within the fiber polymer system, the dye molecules are held by hydrogen bonds and Van der Waals forces. The dyeing is considered to take place in the following simultaneous steps. Diffusion of dye in solid phase into water by breaking up into individual molecules. Then this, diff this diffusion depends on dispersibility and solubility of dye stuff and is aided by the presence of dispersing agents. So we add dispersing agents for, to increase the diffusion of the dye in solid phase. Adsorption of the dissolved dye from the solution onto the fiber surface. First, the dye adsorbed on the uh, on the fiber surface, then this dye stuff absorption by fiber surface is influenced by the solubility of the dye in the dye bath and that in the fiber. Diffusion of the adsorbed dye from the fiber surface into the interior of the fiber substance toward the center. In normal condition, the adsorption rate is always higher than the diffusion rate, and this is the governing step of dye. When equilibrium time is reached, the following equilibria are also established. The equilibria between dye dispersed in the bath, dye dissolved in the bath, dye dissolved in the bath, dye adsorbed on the fiber, dye adsorbed in the fiber, and dye diffused in the fiber. So now we will see what are dispersing agents and their 
properties and functions. Disperse dye, disperse dyes are insoluble in water and form aqueous dispersion in water. At first, these dye molecules are formed as large particles and they are made smaller particles by grinding. But as they are water insoluble, they will give uneven dyeing if they are directly used in dye bath. So to ensure uniform and trouble-free dyeing, the dye should be present in dye bath in a uniform and very fine form and should give an stable dispersion. This is the reason for which a special chemical is used in dye bath named dispersing agent. They should be effective under dyeing conditions, stable to hard water, high temperature, and other dyeing assistance. For example, soap powder, red oil, alkyl sulfates, alkyl anhydride, sulfonates, are some surface acting agents which are recommended as dispersing agents in dispersed dyes. They avoid uneven dyeing of the fiber. Functions of dispersed dye. Dispersing agents. It is this in the process of particle size reduction of dye. It enables the dye to be formed in powder form. It facilitates the reconversion of the powder into a dispersion which is required for dyeing. It maintains the dispersion in a fine form in the dye bath throughout the process. It increases solubility of dispersed dye in water. It affects on the art of dyeing. Effects of various conditions on dispersed dyeing. First, the effect of temperature. In case of dyeing with dispersed dye, temperature plays an important role. For the swelling of fiber, temperature above 100 degrees Celsius is required. If high temperature dyeing method is applied, again in case of carrier dyeing method, this swelling occurs at 85 to 90 degrees Celsius. In case of thermosol dyeing method, if temperature is kept more, fabric is kept for less time in thermosol unit. It means if we increase the temperature, there should be less time. Because in high temperature, less time is enough for thermofixation of dye. If it is kept for more time, then dye sublimation and loss of fabric strength may occur. Again, though dispersed dye is a water insoluble dye, its solubility increases when increasing temperature. Effect of pH. For dispersed dyeing, the dye bath should be acidic and pH should be in between 4.5 to 5.5. For maintaining this pH, generally acetic acid is used. We may also use any mineral acid like hydrophobic acid, but uh, oh, sorry, phosphoric acid. But those are strong and costly. So mild acid like acetic acid is used for controlling pH of the bath. At this pH dye, exhaustion is satisfactory. During color development, correct pH should be maintained. Otherwise, fastness will be inferior and color will be unstable. Heat setting procedure of polyester fabric. The process of heat setting is used to stabilize yarn twist, remove residual shrinkage, increase wrinkle resistance, and obtain durable sleep. Polyester may shrink 7% at boil and even more at high temperature. So we, should, we do the heat setting. The importance of heat setting is below. To modify crystalline structure, to improve dimensional stability, to resist wet crease, creasing during washing, to increase safe ironing temperature, to avoid shade variation and affect water inhibition. The disadvantage of heat setting are some dyes sublime at high temperature, Pre-setting reduced dye uptake. Heat setting can be done before or after dyeing. If the fabric is heat set before dyeing, the absorbency of fabric goes down. And if it is done before scouring and bleaching, then the dirt must may permanently deposit on the fabric. If heat is done after dyeing, then some dye may sublime at high temperature and just cause shade variation. The time of heat setting depends on the fabric state. For example, gray, scored, bleach, etc. It also depends on the count of yarning fabric. For heat setting, hot air, hot roller, a radiant machine can be used. And after dyeing, we do the reduction clearing. In case of dark shade dyeing, we have to use more amount of dye and chemical, but these chemicals should be removed from fabric after dyeing. For this reason, a special process is used in case of dispersed dyeing. This cleaning process is called reduction clearing. A typical recipe for reduction cleaning is given below. By reduction cleaning, surface dye molecules and unfixed dye molecules are stripped and this in turn results in level dye. 
reduction in cleaning also improve wash fastness property of textile material. Now we will see the methods. There are three methods which we use for dyeing fiber. Uh, for dyeing, the first is carrier dyeing method. It has been established that certain hydrocarbons, phenols, amino acids, amides, alcohol, esters, ketones, nitriles accelerate the rate of dyeing polyester fiber with dispersed dye from aqueous medium at temperature up to 100 degrees Celsius. These dyeing assistants alter the dispersing property of the dyes and the physical characteristics of the fiber so that more dye can be transferred from the dye bar to the fiber. These are called carriers and these are necessary for dyeing polyester fibers at the normal pressure and temperature below 100 degrees Celsius because they increase the property of the dispersed dyes. Some commercial carriers, these are some commercial carriers, their manufacturer and their chemical class. Factors considered for selecting a carrier. High carrier efficiency, availability at low cost, Little or no effect on light fastness of final dyeing, absence of unpleasant odor, non toxicity, no degradation or decoloration of fiber, ease of removal after dyeing, high stability under dyeing conditions, compatibility with dye stuff, ease of dispersion in the dye bath, low volatility of the carrier, including low volatility in the steam, uniform absorption by the fiber. So, here is the mechanism of carrier action. In carrier method of polyester dyeing, carrier is used. Carriers swell the fiber and ultimately cause relaxation of the fiber. They may operate by opening up the internal fiber structure and allow the dye molecule to diffuse more rapidly. They act as molecular lubricants, reducing intermolecular forces operating in the fiber, thereby following the dye molecule to force its way in. Its action may be described as below. It creates dye film on the fiber surface. Carrier takes dye inside the fiber from dye carrier association. It increases the solubility of dye in the dye bath. Carriers penetrate inside the fiber polymer chain and thereby reduce interchain attraction. This polymer chain becomes movable and so dye molecule may enter the polymer system of fiber. It increases swelling of the fiber. The absorbed carrier increases the rate of dye uptake by creating liquid co-fiber. It increases the absorbency power of fiber. It lubricates the thermally agitated fiber molecules. The automatic portion of carrier is postulated to have van der Waals force and attraction for hydrophobic group of which attract water. With increasing molecular weight, the carrier efficiency also increases up to a certain limit. Dyeing of polyester fabric with dispersed dye in carrier method. This is the same procedure as I told you. Here are some disadvantages of carrier dyeing. Carriers add to production cost of dyeing. Firstly, for dyeing, it is used, which is costly, and is secondly, for its removal, LP is required. Carriers are Unhygienic and toxic, it creates skin diseases. Some dyeing machines may create carrier spot. Carrier defects the light fastness property of dyed materials. This effect may be reduced by treating the material with hot air for 30 minutes. Some carriers are dyed specific. They possess different efficiencies with different dyes. Others have compatibility with certain dyes. So the second method of dyeing is high temperature dyeing method. In high temperature dyeing method, either material or liquor should circulate. Otherwise, dye molecules will not penetrate inside the material. They will stay on surface only. In this method, temperature is kept in between 105 to 140 degrees Celsius and pressure is kept from 0 to 170. This method is also known as pressure dyeing, which is used for highly crystalline synthetic fibers and their blends. This technique causes the fiber to swell even more than with achieved at 100 degrees Celsius temperature. So the dye molecule penetrate the fiber polymer system, it eliminates the need of carriers because here the temperature is high that causes the swelling of the fiber. So this is the recipe of high temperature dyeing method. And next one is procedure. At first, a paste of dye and dispersing agent is prepared and water is added to it. Heat is controlled by adding acetic acid. This condition is kept for 15 minutes at temperature 60 degrees Celsius. Then the dye bar temperature is raised to 130. 
and this temperature is maintained for one hour. Within this time, dye is diffused in dye bath. Adsorbed the fiber in the required shade is obtained. The dye bath is cooled as early as possible. The fabric is hard rinsed and reduction cleaning is done if required. Then the fabric is finally rinsed and dry. This is a graph from which we can see the high temperature dyeing method. First, keep the temperature at 60 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes and add dye uh, plus dispersing agents uh, plus fiber. Then for 30 minutes and then increase the temperature for 60 minutes at 130 degrees Celsius and then uh, keep the temperature at 60 degrees Celsius and wash off and dry the fiber. And the last and the third process of the dyeing is thermosol dyeing method. Dyeing of polyester fabric in thermosol dyeing method. Thermosol method is continuous method of dyeing with dispersed dye. Here, dyeing is performed at higher temperature, like the temperature is 182 to 220 degrees Celsius in a closed basin. Here, time of dyeing should be maintained very carefully to get required shade. Because the temperature is high, if we will keep it for a longer time, it will cause, uh, it will reduce the strength of the fabric. Sequence, this dyeing process is developed by DuPont Corporation in 1949. Here at sufficient temperature, the fibers are softened and their internal structure is opened. Polymer macromolecules vibrate vigorously and dye molecules diffuse in a fiber. It requires only a few seconds to one minute and temperature about 200 to 230 degrees Celsius. The sequence of operation is padding, drying, thermofixing, and then after treatment. The procedure of thermosol dyeing method. At first, the fabric is padded with dye solution using above recipe. Then the fabric is dried at 100 degrees Celsius temperature in dryer. For dyeing, infrared drying method is an ideal method by which water is evaporated from fabric in vapor form. This eliminates the migration of dye particles. Then the fabric is passed through thermo to thermosol unit where thermofixing is done at about 205 degrees Celsius. After thermofixing, the unfixed dyes are washed off along with thickener and other chemicals by warm water. Then soap wash and reduction cleaning is done if, if it is required. And finally, the fabric is washed and dry. So here is a comparison between high temperature, carrier, and thermosol dyeing method. In carrier method, we use carrier, but no thickener. In high temperature, there is no use of carrier, no use of thickener. Thickener is used and no carrier is used because the temperature is high. Not used nowadays, used no and method is in use. In carrier method, lower drying temperature, high temperature dyeing and very high dyeing temperature. Productionless, more carefulness required, very much carefulness, the carefulness required. Costly as carrier is used, it is not costly, costly as special. Less bright shade, more bright shade, and very bright shade. And the carrier method, batch wise process, batch wise process, but this one is continuous process. So these all are the difference between carrier, high temperature, and thermosol dyeing method. So now we will see the printing of polyester with dispersed dye. First, we will see its introduction. Dispersed dyes are the most suitable dyes for printing polyester fabric. Selecting dyes with good streaming and thermofixation fastness are suitable for printing. The washing fastness of dispersed dye on polyester are much higher than acetate, triacetate, or nylon. Dispersed dye have a high degree of dispersibility, and the dispersed dyes marketed in liquid form are easy to make into stock thickening without pre dispersing. The printing paste should contain a dispersing agent. Thickeners used in printing with dispersed dyes. Proper selection of thickener is important in printing polyester fabrics with dispersed dyes. It depends on method of printing. For example, either roller printing or screen printing. And method of fixation of dye. The kind of fabric to be printed also includes the thickener's choice. Suitable thickener should adhere well to the fabric and should produce an elastic film to prevent cracking. The thickener should be easily removable in the after treatment. Thickening with a high solid content bring less water on hydrophobic fabric 
and produce sulfur in more level prints than those with low solid content. But the thickening with low solid content behave better with respect to cracking and in thermosol process for better color yield. But its sharpness in print is not as good as with high solid content thickening. These are the most common used thickness. There are star ethers, natural gums, locust bean gum, and CMC, and microgram. May program. Printing and polyester fabrics with dispersed dyes. Far printing on polyester fabric with dispersed dye, the selection of thickness is very important. The print paste should adhere on the fabric surface and penetrate into it. During fixation of the dye at high temperature, the fabric is in a paste state and the dye in a volatile state so that it dissolves in the fabric and the color becomes very false. The penetration becomes so deep that it is difficult to distinguish between the printed fabric side and black and back side. This is a recipe for printing of polyester with dispersed dye. So the fixation method after printing. There are the three fixation methods. The first one is thermofixation, superheated steaming, and then high pressure steaming. We will discuss them one by one. The first is thermofixation. The feature of this method of dye fixation I mentioned below. No steam is used. Dye is fixed by subjecting the print to hot air at 2100 degrees Celsius for one minute. The fixation is carried out in a backing oven are in a baking oven or in a center where heat setting can also be done simultaneously. The process productivity is high. The dye which have good sublimation fastness are subjected to this thermofixation process. There is 10 to 15% loss of color in thermofixation. So the shade becomes dull. It is a continuous process of dye fixation which gives high production. Superheated steaming. The feature of this method of dye fixation I mentioned below. It is a continuous process. This method is the best of the three methods. Dye is fixed at 100 to 180 degrees Celsius for 2 to 1 minute by radiators. High productivity, no loss of color. Dye with medium sublimation fastness can be applied. The fabric handle is very soft. Heat pressure steaming. The feature of this method of dye fixation I mentioned below. This continuous process, low productivity, dye fixation is done by high pressure steam, low production, dye with low sublimation fastness can be applied. It gives good color yield and bright print and smoothness. So after printing, we again do the reduction cleaning that we do after dyeing. After the fabric is applied, dye fixation method it is subjected to reduction cleaning process. Reduction cleaning process is carried out for obtaining deep shade more than five to 15 percent. So this is uh, for reduction cleaning, a bath is prepared containing caustic soda, hydrosulfide, sodium mining detergent, and then its ratio is one ratio five. In the bath, caustic soda and hydrosulfide are taken for the stripping of dye and non-ionic detergent is taken for washing off. After passing the printed fabric through this part, then the fabric is washed off by hot air and then with cool air. So this is all for my side. Thank you.